Hello, watchers and listeners. Welcome to another episode of Northern Lights Books Author Interview Plunge. Today's guest is Stanley P. Brown, a Mississippi State University professor who's an expert in superheroes, and I'm not kidding. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Stan Brown is the author of The Legacy, Veiled Memory, and most recently, Fallen Wizard, all from Black Opal Books, making Dr. Brown our second Black Opal Books author. Yeehaw for Black Opal. Dr. Brown writes that as a child, he always had heroes. His first hero was his big brother, closely followed by Spider-Man, Thor, the Beast, Iceman, the original Angel, Cyclops, and the rest of the then Marvel Comics universe. At some point, Stan realized he didn't have the right stuff to be a superhero himself and chose the more agonizing, demanding, and less understood role of college professor. Works of nonfiction followed, but the call of storytelling remained strong, and he answered that call with his debut novel, The Legacy. Other novels are following in short order. This part is where I normally read an excerpt from our guest's work. Instead, I'm going to tell you about superheroes. Dr. Brown sent me a peer-reviewed paper published in an American Physiology Society journal. The paper is entitled Superhero Physiology, The Case for Captain America, and it was an enjoyable read that entertained and educated. I was laughing at some of the humor in it. I know it's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but if you're wondering if Stan knows his stuff, please give this paper a read. We'll have copies available on the page. As always, you'll also find links to Stan's books, social networks, and website, www.spbrownbooks.com, on his interview page. Please welcome Stanley P. Brown. Hey, Stanley! Hey, hey, great to be here. Stanley, you, you've got quite a resume, i got to tell you. I, I've, I've interviewed a bunch of well-educated professional people and your superhero stuff had me cracking up. That was, that was good. Do, do your books have that sense of humor in them too? Well, I don't know. The books probably tend to be a little more serious. So. Oh, shucks. Believe it or not, I, I don't have that great of a sense of humor, but I, I try to lighten it up a little bit. Uh, the books are more on the serious side, ex- except for the fallen wizard, the children's book that's coming out in August. But uh, even it, is um, uh, kind of like a thriller and has a, a pretty serious side, but I tried to I tried to lighten it up for twelve year olds. Okay, uh, well, aside from proving the Captain America really can't exist, and you wrote this f- this falling wizard for children. Right. right. Um, what other writing do you do? Well, you know, um, been in academics for thirty years, about, and uh, know lots of research papers two three uh well about three are going on four uh textbooks really so those are uh the non-fiction things i do one would hope yeah for, for work <laughs> and like you said and as my website shows or, or says uh it was boredom <laughs> it got me into doing uh uh fiction i just wanted a challenge you know it's uh-huh and it's you know I found it's easy to put out academic books, academic papers, or at least it became easy. It's I, I was tenured in three different institutions, so uh, that wasn't a challenge anymore. So I sat down and I said, you know, I'm gonna try to get a novel published. This was about 2005. Mm-hmm. So I sat down with a um, pad and pen and started jotting down ideas, and I'm still cranking them out today. <laughs> So you do it in longhand. You started in 2005 and you've, you've written your novels in longhand. What have your novels well, been about? Actually, I just wrote um, uh, ideas down. Uh-huh. I, I, when I am ready to start writing, I, you know, obviously I have my computer and I start typing away. They, they're all paranormal uh, things that interest me. Uh, the first one, uh, the legacy, uh, if you know anything about uh, either, uh, uh, Vince Flynn or and Jim Butcher those are two very different genre authors you put those together though and you have the legacy hmm. and so I, I mean I'm interested in real world stuff and I'm interested in paranormal so the 
they found a, a home in the legacy. Okay. Uh, Veiled Memory is more of a contemporary um, sci-fi fantasy. It takes place in upstate New York and different points around the world. Um, I am interested in contemporary things. I, I will never write a sword and sorcery type fantasy novel or anything like that. Uh, I want my magic to be uh, grounded in this real world that we all walk in. Okay. And all of my books are like that. Well, your, your children's novel, A Paranormal Thriller Fantasy for Children, that, that's like an interesting combination for kids. <laughs> what made you sit down and say, yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll write a paranormal thriller fantasy novel for children. Yeehaw. What was the story behind that? Uh, I wanted to explore the, uh, the, con the concept of the elemental uh, principles again, you know, air, water, fire, uh, earth. And uh, I've done that in a couple of uh, books and wanted to try to do something uh, with uh, middle grade stuff. You know, way back in the day when my three girls were uh, just coming along and about the same time, uh, the Harry Potter novels became really huge in the late 90s and they were uh, coming of age. We, my wife and I read those to them and uh, I just, you know, fell in love with that type of thing then. I had always read, quote, children's works before. Um, and I wanted to see if I could produce one myself. So uh, that, that was the outcome. Oh, okay. Very, lizard. very good. Um, now you've also written, <laughs> let me see if I got this one right. A paranormal government thriller that mixed ghosts with terrorists. And w when I read that about ghosts and terrorists, I, it reminded me of the Reese's Pieces commercial, two great tastes that go great together. So you've written about two scary things and made them go together. Was that Veiled Memory? Is that what that one is? No, no, uh, this is The Legacy. You're, you're oh, The just, Legacy. You're, okay. You're just referencing it. This is what I, I talked about earlier when I put together uh, Jim Butcher and uh -huh. Vince Flynn. Of course, Vince Flynn, if your audience uh, doesn't know anything about him, he since died in 2013 at the age of about 46, but he wrote CIA uh, government... Uh, uh, black ops type yeah. things and um, of course Jim Butcher uh, writes uh, very uh, you know paranormal uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the, the genre right now but fantasy type mm -hmm. works but also grounded in the real world you know mm -hmm. if, if the real world can have a wizard detective in, in Chicago <laughs> and he's grounded in the real world. So I, I did a little bit of um, that with this, with that book. Uh, so it's about a um, person who's based here in Mississippi, and his family legacy is to fight sorcery. And of course, coming up, he uh, discounts all that as wild fables of a, a family that's lost just about everything they've had, and just kind of hold, holding on to their strange past and he doesn't believe it all until the legacy grabs him by the you know what and makes him believe it <laughs> okay um so that's the legacy now now which one is the memory book what's that one about the old memory is the first of a trilogy oh okay called uh, the stonehenge chronicles oh right okay celtic mythology yeah right right the stonehenge chronicles uh, so I wanted to uh, explore, again, from a contemporary fantasy, you know, this setting, current day, real world, uh, explore the origins of Stonehenge. So um, if you're interested in that, read my last of that trilogy, which hasn't been written yet, and you'll find out why Stonehenge is there and how it got built. Okay. You have the secrets, okay. Good it's, so, it's so contemporary, my heroine there, my uh, protagonist is a history professor at Cornell University. Okay, somebody you know by any chance? No, I don't, but my wife is a history professor, so. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. all right. Uh, 
And she has flaming red hair and rides a stallion. Okay, fine, all right. Well, actually, my character does. <laughs> ah, well, it's Celtic mythology. Flaming red hair. Celtic She's mythology. A perfect Irish woman. Yes. Uh, your Twitter account mentions you being Christian, and then I see that you write paranormal. I recently interviewed someone who writes Jewish paranormal. That was kind of interesting. What are the do's and don'ts for a Christian writing paranormal? I, I don't, I would never have thought well, those two would go together. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know that there are any do's and don'ts. This is sort of like a takeoff of um, Tolkien's uh, well uh, known uh, uh, statement on, you know, he being a sub creator under God. And Interesting. That's true of all the, the human, uh, of, of everybody, every person alive. I mean, we have the ability to uh, create, sub-create, and that's, that's the take I have on it. What I do do, though, is try not to overtly, uh, in my, quote, fantasy, try not to overtly, how can I say this, deny the faith. Okay. As I perceive it. Mm -hmm. I try not to overtly do that. So uh, I will never, for instance, uh, write about uh, gods and goddesses and things like that. And that's well-known part of the fantasy genre. Uh, that's, I'm not, I, I don't read things like that. I'm not, not that they're bad. I just don't have an interest in that type mm -hmm. of fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did read uh, The Lord of the Rings several times and, and even, his, uh, ground, even his underpinning works uh, that that's based on. Mm -hmm. I think that's required for people our age. Right. We yeah. have to. It's required. You know, you, you couldn't survive high school unless you did that. Well, I became a member of a book club back in my 20s. And one of the first books I ordered, this was in the 1970s, was The, uh, the Silmarillion. I don't know if you remember yes. that or have read oh, it. Oh, yeah. I have a copy upstairs. Yes. So you're a real token nerd if you have that book. And I've yes. actually read it. Yes. Uh, I also have Sir Gawain and the Green Knight by Tolkien. There, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you and I, we're, we're going to be, we're talking real serious stuff here. And meanwhile, the audience so, is going. And Tolkien, and Tolkien was a well-known Christian, right? So, I mean, he actually brought C.S. Lewis to faith. I didn't realize that. Yeah, he did. Uh, they were all members of this group they had going there in Oxford, England, uh, the Inklings. And, um, uh, Yep, he pulled uh, Lewis in, kicking and screaming, and then the rest is history, as Lewis is a very well-known yeah. 20th century Christian apologist. Chronicles of Narnia, screw tape letters. Yes. Right, exactly. The uh, Space Trilogy. Okay, all right. Back down to Stan Brown. <laughs> you talk about the continuum between science fiction and fantasy. And that you sometimes write in the flair of your non-relative, Dan Brown. Could you explain that continuum, science fiction to fantasy? Wow, that's hard. Uh, I would say, let me explain it using my books that I have. Uh, you know, Fallen Wizard, I would say, is all the way to the fantasy side of that continuum. And I would put books like uh, the Harry Potter novels on that end as well. My book... Uh, Veiled Memory, the first of the Stonehenge Chronicles, I view as being sort of right in the middle of that continuum between pure sci-fi and then pure fantasy. The first scene in that novel is from the McDonald Observatory in southwest Texas in the Davis Mountains. It's a real place, and it's where they do lunar ranging uh, experiments, getting the distance between Earth and Moon, an actual thing that they do. And that's a central part of my novel, the prologue of that book takes place there. And uh, as a background, one of the subplots I have going is that, is that the moon is being drawn for some reason, I won't give it away, closer to the earth. Mm -hmm. In actuality, the moon is moving further out, like two, three centimeters a year, but we're talking thousands of miles closer to the earth. And that discovery is made in, in the prologue of my book, Veil of Memory, and that's going to be a subplot uh, through the, uh, the trilogy. Mm -hmm. 
So that puts it pretty squarely in the sci-fi side of things, but I do have more fantastical elements there, uh, which especially the second book, which I'm halfway done with now. Okay. I'll delve into a lot more. Very good. In your professional life, Professor, Dr. Stanley P. Prom, you've done presentations at Oxford. Now, if you tell me that you did a presentation at Oxford about Captain America and how he can't exist, you're my hero. But what was it about, <laughs> seriously? You know, the, the presentation at Oxford was about uh, the use of um, physical education, for instance, in uh, uh, exercise uh, to improve the... Um, the learning abilities of grade school children. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm not really, that's not really my area of expertise, but that's what we talked about in Oxford. Okay. And that that's one nice. hour, uh, I spent 10 nights in Oxford all to do that one hour presentation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, love, I love visiting the pubs and visiting, oh, no. uh, visiting, um, the place where Tolkien had hung out a lot, uh, the bird and baby. Mm -hmm. No, the eagle and child, I'm sorry, the eagle and child. Uh, so I wanted to get to his grave site, but I never did make it. I'm gonna have to get there again one day. Well, congratulations on making it over there. Your current series, starting with Veiled Memory, I believe, deals with Celtic mythology. That's Veiled Memory, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It deals with Celtic mythology, and Celtic mythology makes a great deal of use of animal energies, animal spirits, mascots. So if you had a personal mascot, who or what would it be? And I'm going to throw it out there for all the Marvel comic people, Lockjaw. Tell me it was Lockjaw. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> ah. Well, I wasn't a real huge fan of the uh, Inhumans uh, comic series. I just like the dog. Yeah, the, the dog was pretty cool. <laughs> so you're probably thinking uh, in terms of some of Philip Pullman's uh, work, where you, you have uh, these, uh, your soul resides outside of your body in the form of a, uh, a daemon. So yeah. Now, I've read that as well. Liked it, too. Philip yeah. Pullman is a fantastic writer. Yes, definitely. Uh, but uh, I guess my personal one would be uh, <laughs> a border collie. Nice animal. Yes. Very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Very kinetic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very focused. Okay. You write paranormal. What are you most afraid of? Oh, wow. I have uh, in, in the legacy... Uh, like I say, we have, it, it's a combination of ghosts and terrorism. Uh, so I would say ghosts would be, I mean, those as a kid growing up, a good ghost story would really knock me away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That and vampires, but I'm not interested in vampires and werewolves anymore. I don't write um, that type of fantasy. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you like best about yourself? Uh, well, I, I hate talking about myself, but you have to do it as an author, don't you? Um, I guess I'm able to focus pretty well. <laughs> okay. Get, get these things done. I mean, I have an idea. I can take it from um, uh, just a spark of an idea to a, a finished work with an arc and characters that you grow to, hopefully, you grow to like mm -hmm. as you read. As you know, most novels are, are sold because people like the characters in and not so much about the plot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's a definite uh, process. You gotta build good characters. Yes. Okay, so you've, you've already kind of revealed that what you like least about yourself is talking about yourself. All right, we'll let that one go. Your best habit, what's your best habit? Best in terms of health? Well, I, I'm head of the kinesiology department, so my best habit is moving regularly. <laughs> what, do you have a Fitbit that keeps you going every 45 minutes? What is that? <laughs> well, I, I exercise pretty routinely and regularly. Good. Excellent. What's your routine? Yeah. Help me out here. What, what is your... uh, well, three mornings out of the week, we go to the gym on campus, and uh, the other mornings, pretty much, we're walking. Mm -hmm. Used to be jogging, but as I've gotten older, I'm 
developing some orthopedic issues. Yeah. Yes. So walking hurts. If you can't, if you can't run, walk. Yes. Very good. If What's you your worst walk, habit? Move some other kind of way. What's that? What's your worst habit? Uh, probably being. Uh, uh, my wife will tell you that I'm pretty impatient. Really? Yes. I want things to happen now. You you seem like a really laid back kind of guy, but that's all right. That must be Pietro in you. Maybe so. Yes. And all the listeners are going, what? 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 Who? What? Look at the old comics, people. Maximoff. Yes. What do you consider your greatest accomplishment? This interview, he says. By God, making it through this interview with you, Joseph. What do you, <laughs> seriously, what is your best accomplishment? Greatest Probably accomplishment. marrying my wife, Yvonne. Uh -huh. number one, having our three daughters, uh, number two. And, but, you know, getting these novels done and published. You know, you, you, you hear about self-publishing today, but uh, I never was interested in doing that. I always wanted to find a publisher mm -hmm. and actually getting the thing published. Now, I know a lot of people are making a lot of money self-publishing, so I'm not downplaying that at all. But I just wanted an actual publisher, and that's been an accomplishment, I think. It's just... I, like I tell people, anybody can write a novel. It's really difficult to write one worthy of publication. Yes. So it, it, and that was what I set out to do, and it took me a while, but I've done it now. Good, good work. Good for you. Okay, talking about publishing, you write for Black Opal Books. Do you recommend them to other authors? I do. They're very uh, uh, author-friendly. Uh, the, the process there... Uh, is uh, excellent. The editors, the art department, very easy to work with, very amiable people. Uh, no problems so far. If you want to put out uh, paperback, they, they, they do not put out hardback books, uh, mainly because they're expensive to put out, but uh, if, you, if your sales are up, I think they'll take a look at doing that. Uh, but uh, they've been very good to work with. I've been very pleased with, with them. So you now I have three published with them and working on more as we speak. Excellent. Which superhero did you want to be when you grew up? Well, you know, my favorite one is the one I didn't write about. Uh, and the favorite one was Daredevil. Really? Yeah, I really like Daredevil comics because, you know, I write paranormal and there's a dark edge to my stories, even the kid story that's just coming out in August. And Daredevil comics were real gritty, street level, real dark. And you can imagine a 10 year old reading this stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to be Daredevil. Okay, very good. Who's your favorite fictional character outside of comic books? Uh, wow. Fictional character. Well, let, let me just go with a guy I really like to read, and that's uh, Jim Butcher's uh, Harry Dresden. Oh, yeah. The, the, the wizard in Chicago. Right. The, the yeah. wizard detective. Yep. Yep. What do you want readers to remember about your books? Uh, I want them to get excited about not only the characters, but there's an actual plot that is taking them somewhere. And then they get so wrapped up in it that, yes, they want to read about more about the character, but they want to see where the story is going to go. So I want them to remember story, you know, and uh, those are the types of things uh, I like to read. Uh, good, strong characterization, but uh, plot driven as well. Okay. Now, you're, you started putting down your notes in 2005, and this was for The Legacy, right? No, actually, The Legacy is the first one published, not the first one written. Okay. First Which one was... written was Veiled Memory. Oh, all right. And then right. I did something interesting. I, turn, I tried to turn Veiled Memory into a children's book, middle grade, and I actually had 
uh, gained a uh, literary agent for it uh, with the Ethan Ellenberg uh, agency in New York City. Uh, that, sad to say, this was in 2011, that didn't go anywhere. That fell so flat. I was so disheartened by that hmm. that I, uh, I initiated leaving uh, the contract with the agency behind uh, because the agent that signed me just bombed big time. And, I, <laughs> and so I work right now, you know, uh, with the uh, independent uh, house, uh, Black Opal, and, you know, you don't have to be agent to, to, uh, to be with them. Right. And that's, that's satisfying for me uh, so far right now. Uh, How did you celebrate the publication of your first book? Which was the legacy that came out last October and okay. with a bottle of wine. Good wine, not, not this $5 stuff at the local vineyard, but really good wine, we, I hope. We tend to buy within the 15 to $25 range. Okay, so this was stuff that Daredevil would actually be able to appreciate, although he I think so, right, right. He could, right. He could smell it you. from like miles away. Okay, good. All right. right. Good on the palate. All right. Dr. Brown, this has been great. I have one last question. Do you have time for one more question? Absolutely, yeah. Is there anything I forgot to ask you? That's not the question, but is there anything that I forgot to bring up? Uh you you did mention my website. Yes, I did. Good, which is good. Also, just for your the information of the people um, who might listen in the future, that uh, I have an, another book that I just finished writing. Uh, it's a children's chapter book. It's not a novel. You know, if you know anything about chapter books, they tend to be on the smallish side. This one's only nine thousand words. Hmm. They typically run up to about fifteen thousand words, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, not even not even novellas uh, but I wrote it about my my two pets my cats butter and pixie and we live on a street here in Mississippi uh, Starkville that's called tally ho two words mm -hmm. you know, riding a horse tally ho yeah and uh, that book I'm looking for a publisher for it right now it's called uh, the captain of tally ho <laughs> okay with the main character of my milk Siamese cat. We'll let them, we'll let everyone know. All right. Here's my last question for you, sir. Are you ready? Yes. What question do you wish that someone would ask about you or your books, but nobody has? Uh, the question. Uh, when is it going to come out in hardback? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, uh, so out of curiosity, Dr. Brown, Stanley. Yeah. When is it going to come out in hardback? I don't know. The sales have got to be up, uh, according to my editor at Black Opal. Okay. And I haven't, you know, I think the worst thing about being uh, being with a um, smallish, although they, they have a huge stable of writers and they put out a lot of books, um, still a small press and, you know, uh, they have a limited budget and it's not like being at one of the big five or six New York city publishers where they do all the marketing and things like that. So it's been a eye opener at the amounts of things you have to do to self market yourself and your books. Um, so it's just tough to get it out there. I think, you know, I actually think I have some good material here, but who knows about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in Barnes and Noble stores right now. Uh, that's hard. Shoot, my my even my local uh, mom and pop bookstore here in town won't won't stock it. Really? But the Barnes and Noble, I've been uh, the Barnes and Noble on campus is stocking, and I have done some book signings around at different Barnes and Noble stores. Good. But I haven't gotten into stock it nationwide yet. Well, let's let's maybe get two or three more copies sold, and you'll be able to, to, to break that open for yourself. Yeah, and I'm trying to do the Twitter thing, and I'll uh -huh. I'll, I'll be uh, advertising this interview and uh, the other authors that you do. Oh, bless you, sir. Via via Twitter, pretty soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Dr. Stanley P. Brown at, remember his website, everybody, it is www.spbrownbooks.com and he writes paranormal thriller fantasies for adults and children. More to follow. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a blessing and glad I met you through another Black Opal author. Very good, sir. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.